Hello everybody. Happy New Year. Howie and I are here to give you a good greeting. Come on. Okay, you can go now. <laughs> uh, it's a short video. Um, like a lot of my videos, I uh, have a lot of start and don't have much finish. Don't want to do a lot of yakety yak here, but uh, this video uh, is really... Um, expressing what I've kind of learned and hoping that uh, I'll learn from communication from you guys out there. Uh, the discussion is going to be about uh, carbide, cemented carbide boring bars and uh, I hope that you'll enjoy it. There's no machining in this. Uh, it's, it's basically uh, a discussion about the various uh, differences between a high dollar bar and an import bar. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, hopefully I'll follow up with a part two uh, that will possibly have some machining. It's pretty hard to show in it, an inside bore in what the what the chip is doing but uh, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for stopping by and have a safe and happy new year. Hey guys this video is going to be a discussion about brazed carbide boring bars and you can see there I have uh, a set of nine boring bars uh, those came from Banggood and here's the cut sheet and then this single bar over here is a criterion uh, boring bar and here's a cut sheet for a set of six from MSC As you can see, it's uh, apples and oranges in cost. Um, and we're going to talk about the product and maybe even get into some testing. But first, we're just going to just basically talk about the difference between the two products. So let me do a little setup here and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the Criterion Boring Bar and a V block here. And in the background, you can see another V block, and that has one of the Banggood carbide uh, products there. So let's talk about this Criterion unit uh, right now. Now first off, um, you'll, you'll notice it's got a very thin blade and then secondly this is a half inch diameter shaft and there's a flat cut back on that shaft. That flat when engaged by the drive screw there in the V-block puts this unit on center. The Criterion carbides are on center half of the two, half of the uh, 500 thousandths. And when it's set like that, it sets the rake angles. It sets the side rake this direction, and it also sets the front rake for the cutting. Now let me uh, switch out and I'll bring the uh, Banggood unit over and show you the difference. Now just for reference here, to start off, and you have to believe me, there's the Criterion unit, and we know that this edge of that carbide right there is at half of the half inch diameter of the uh, bar itself. So I've brought the Banggood, or any cement carbide, I'm, I'm not saying it's just Banggood, but any of these import um, cemented carbides. So right now that tip is equal to that tip. So it's on center for the half inch shaft. So let me rotate it. I'll try doing it right here on camera. I don't know if I can or not. I'll try. And I've colored the ends of these in red so that you can see the difference. Now with that unit on center, you can see that I do have a cutting angle here, but I don't have a cutting angle uh, on the back side. It's a very negative, very negative cut there right now, where the criterion unit is actually set at a positive. 
So quite a difference there. You can also notice the thickness of the carbide between the import and the criterion. Now, I want to point out another thing that's very, it's not that obvious to most people, but if you look at the criterion unit here, you'll notice that this shaft is concentric with the, the body of the whole unit. You can see that right there. If we bring this unit in, you notice that this shaft is not in center of the body itself. You can see how much wider it is over here than it is over there. So, what does that tell us? Well, one of the things that makes the Criterion have such an advantage is the fact that with this locating flat, you can pull this out of a tool bit, the boring head in the mill, or even in the lathe, and when you put it back into the tool, you're basically going to be back on center. You're going to be back exactly where you were. With this unit, since the imports do not have flats cut on them, if you remove this tool, uh, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to set it up and be back at the correct position that you pulled the tool out of. Probably you can't even do it. Um, let me pause for a second and I'll be right back. I wanted to add a comment on this setup is that the import tool will cut but it will not produce a rolling chip whereas the criterion with the positive rake at it will roll a chip off. Okay, a little visual setup here. I have rotated the import so that the, well before I move it, just look at a couple things here. So you can see there's the criterion in relationship to the parallel. It's a little below the top. And right now you can see the import is above the top of the parallel. And you can see it's also running in an angle, uh, in a negative angle. I don't know if this is oh, I don't know if this is coming up or not. Um, we'll talk about this first though. So in the background there, let's see. You see I've got a little mark. And then again you can see how the boring bar, the boring head itself is offset away from the shank. So I've rotated it without measuring, best you know, using I central to put the half inch diameter shaft parallel with the top of the uh, v-block there so it's in, in in that situation there you can notice that um, one i'm not on center with the half inch diameter and secondly i've got a cutting edge there that is let's go back and put this in place again Whoop. you can see is is negative let's see if I can line it up with the camera oh. pretty hard to see I can see it better than what the camera shows there let's try to get it lined up there in the camera it looks almost positive to me there but to look at it it looks negative but the the thing that I wanted to show is that there's no there's no relief not much that's certain
It's almost it's almost parallel with the block. So you would end up with this tool rubbing when it's installed like that. So as you know, I collect quite a bit of tooling, different sails and stuff. So here I thought I'd show you um, how somebody has modified an import um, tool. So the one on the left there is stock and the one on the right has been modified. And I'm gonna kind of spin it there. And you can see how they've basically ground most of the carbide away to get their cutting angles. You can see the difference in the tool itself um, to make the tool perform. I got another one I'll show you. Again, here we go with the same size import tooling. The one on the left is brand new. The one on the right, someone has modified so that they could actually get chips to curl curl out. So you can see the dish that they've put in the carbide. Now I haven't ran the tool on the right, so I don't know how it performs, but I just wanted to show this as examples on modifying this tool so that you can get performance out of the uh, out of the carbide. And I got another one to show you. Oh no, the other ones, let me just grab them. Um, this, this tool here uh, is, uh, this one is from Japan. Boring tool. And I just wanted to show you, let's see if I can do this one behind the camera. But you can see that the shaft is basically concentric with the uh, the boring bar itself is concentric with the shaft. And this was the second one. This one is a uh, I think this one's a bore right. And where are you? And again, you can see that the shaft, the boring bar itself is centered on the shaft and you can see the cut relief angle uh, that it attains also. So just a couple examples of some other units other than uh, Criterion and then um, how people have modified it. And I'm looking to do some modifications uh, to actually put a flat on it. Um, so that the tooling, and then here's what happens when you uh, break one. That's no good. Happens. I am planning on doing a part two where I will be putting a flat on the actual shaft so that it aligns the shank and the cutting tip. So that's something I'd like to do here in the future. In closing, I wanted to give a shout out to a YouTube buddy of mine, James Green, and uh, here's a, a link to his channel. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, and uh, Howie and I are here to wish you a happy new year. Huh? Oh boy. Okay, okay. Turn around, turn around, sit up.